Okay, so I've got a default 3D view here, and now I want to make an exploded axonometric or an exploded isometric. So I'm going to duplicate this default view, duplicate view, and just choose duplicate there. And then I'll rename it and call it exploded. Uh, let's say it is, it's isometric. Okay, so I'm going to set the angle that I want for my view by clicking on the corner there, which gives me an exact isometric. And then now I'm going to select some of these elements. So just uh, using control to select multiple objects. So I'm just going to get that wall there. There we go. And I'll get a few more walls and the other roofs on that same level. Okay, so you'll see then in these views you have this displace elements option. Okay, and that gives you a gizmo, so it's like your 3ds Max move icon with X, Y and Z. So I'm just going to click on the Z axis there and move it up. Now it's not actually moving it, it's just displacing it in this view. So if I show you the original 3D view, everything's still in place. But in this one, those things have been moved up. And then it... Yeah, that's why I've duplicated the view. Yep. And so now I can see that there are some other walls that I'd want to be included with these up here. So I'm going to select that again, and then go to Edit. And you can see right away it's on the Add option. So I can choose these other walls to add it to that set. I oh, so you need to select some objects and then you'll see the button come up up the top. Okay, so these were cinemas and so I want all of the shell around those cinemas uh, to be one uh, thing. Helps if you um, model this in levels, which I haven't done entirely for this project because it was a bit of a different sort of arrangement. But uh, you should get the idea anyway from what I'm doing there. So all these things can come up to that new set or the original set that I've chosen. Ah, now I don't want that one in there, so I'm just going to undo that last selection. Okay, so maybe the floor there, that wall can stay, and I think a few of these other things stay, that one can maybe go up as well. Okay, so I'll finish that, and then I can move that up higher, and then have maybe actually some of these walls could go back into this area, so I'm going to select that set and then go to edit again and this time go to remove. And I can choose those long walls there and make those go back. So now I can select some more objects. using control here to select multiple just the way you do normally. Oh yeah of course yeah you can right click and then uh, select all but I don't want to do that because I, I've got things that Oh yes yeah just select something right click select all instances and come up on the menu. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so actually, I might leave the lift shaft. Oh no, I'll, no, I'll get that. Sorry.
Okay, so just getting the rest of that shell there. I might bring up all of these exterior walls actually now I think about it. Okay, so again, I'll oh, just get one more floor, and that one. Okay, so again, using this displace button, now I can move those things up. So notice once they're displaced, you'll always get that move icon. Okay, so now I can see some more things that should have gone with that set. So again, I can select that set, go to edit, and just choose the things that I want added to it. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. So, okay, so now I've got another level done basically, and so I'll finish that. And I would probably go and do the next level as a separate uh, set as well, but even just like that, it gives you a much better idea of the way the building goes together. And so now that I want to join these together with the dashed lines that you normally have with exploded axonometrics or isometrics, uh, so I'm just going to select one of these sets, and then you can see you have the path option. So then I can go to the corners, and you'll see these path lines come up automatically. Okay, so there we go. That's probably enough. Okay, so a really quick and easy thing you can do built into Revit instead of using all the tricks that people try to use with um, graphics programs to do the same thing. If you want shadows on, they can be a nice thing to have in these views, but it's being cast onto the ground plane there as well. So to turn that off, you can just go to Sun Settings and then check this option here is off. There we go. That way you can have shadows as well. That's optional.